Once the great leaders are gone, it's time to talk about money at COP26. Finance ministers of dozens of countries, finance institutions and different organizations are discussing how to fund the fight against climate change in the countries with the least resources while simultaneously ensuring that they can continue their economic growth. The UK has been one of the first to splash the cash. The United Kingdom will commit £100 million to the Task Force on Access to Climate Finance, making it quicker and easier for developing countries to access the finance they need. And we're supporting a new capital markets mechanism, which will issue billions of new green bonds here in the UK to fund renewable energy in developing countries. On everyone's mind, one figure, the 86 billion euros per year promised by industrialized countries to boost decarbonization in the developing nations. It's a global transition for which we have an, an estimated price tag. Some have put the global figure between 100 and 150 trillion dollars over the next three decades. At the same time, addressing climate change is the greatest economic opportunity of our time. Financial bodies have a crucial role to play in this massive economic effort to tackle the energy transition. European Investment Bank President Werner Hoyer is optimistic about the private sector's engagement. I'm not happy or satisfied with what the political leaders have hammered out in Rome. Our ambitions would go beyond that, and I hope theirs as well. Sometimes I have the feeling that we all also in the public sphere need a little bit more courage. The EIB's ambitious objective is to reach 1 trillion euros in climate change investments by 2030 through the leverage effect of the loans.